mute hein, toi. Ouais, moi je m'entends. Hein. Testing and waiting for uh, Ruby. So, are you? Can you hear me now? Wave again. If yeah, okay, great. Nico, can you? Si tu c'est pas bon, je pense. Uh, Nico, tu m'entends là? Ou pas? En théorie, il faudrait pas que tu m'entends. Bon, ça a l'air d'être bien. Et Amat, tu m'entends pas non plus. Ok, parfait. Et on attend. On a 3 minutes de retard. On vous entend sur le stream.
of this. Let go. J'essaie de voir euh, le trop grand, mais c'est pas mal, c'est pas le bon. Normal, par ici. Well, welcome basketball fans all over the world, wherever you may be. Welcome now to episode two here of Run That Back. If you haven't seen episode one, I highly recommend. But right now, we're going to run it back to France's victory over the United States at the FIBA World Cup. And I'm very privileged to be joined by Amathan Baye, Rudy Gobert, and Nico Batum. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. And I think what basketball fans all over the world want to know is, how are you doing and how are you keeping busy? So Amathan Baye, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good, man. Uh, first off, thanks for having us. And... Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Just uh, trying to stay in shape, uh, stay busy, stay working, and uh, just keep saying. And uh, yeah, that's it. Excellent, excellent. Rudy Gobert, glad to have you here. Excellent. How are you doing? How are you keeping busy? Uh, pretty much the same. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. You know, it's a uh, weird, weird time, but you know, it's uh, it's great to try to stay in shape and uh, you know, keep doing positive things. Excellent. And Nico Batum, again, thank you for coming on tonight. And how are you and how are you keeping busy yeah. during this time? Well, thank you for having us. No, you know, just stay with the family, try to stay busy, stay in shape. You know, it's pretty crazy, like two other guys say, it's pretty crazy time right now. So just try to stay busy. Now, one question I have for you, Nico, is, you know, since that big victory you had at the FIBA World Cup in China, have you actually gone back and watched this game and where you defeated the United States? Uh, yeah, I watched some video. I didn't really watch the full game. I watched some highlights, you know, some videos like on YouTube and stuff like that, and not the full game. And Rudy, what does it mean to you as well, being a top international basketball player, and to be able to look back in your career and say that, you know, at one point you defeated the United States? Since, you know, when you're a kid, especially growing up in France, that's one of the things that you kind of like picture yourself, you know, in. 15, 10 years, or like you, you picture yourself playing the U.S. And, and hopefully winning. And for me personally, it was a dream, you know, since, since a kid. So uh, it was pretty crazy to be able to accomplish that. And I'm asking by, I mean, you've had a fantastic career. You started in Japan. You're currently in Turkey at the moment. But looking back at that moment, I mean, you were such a crucial player to the French national team. And looking back yourself, what are the thoughts you have from that victory? I mean, crucial player. I wouldn't say all that. I, I think I definitely played my role and uh, had a had a chance to contribute. But uh, obviously, I think it was a great accomplishment for all of us. Whether it's Rudy, like you said, which is a he, he's a top international player, or like some of us, like uh, at our level, I think it was still it was still like something that was really dope for all of us. So yeah, it was a great experience. Well, gentlemen, First we're going to go back. We're going to look at the game. And I tell you what, it was a great game to look at. We're going to look at bits and bobs of this game. But, of course, I guess what everyone wants to know is what was going through your mind. And here you can see the team coming in. And what was that feeling coming into the arena from the, from the uh, bus, of course? What, do you, what was going through your mind at the time, Nico? You know, you know the, the weird thing about that game, we were tough. Uh, that team was scared. We knew, we knew the tough game. But uh, we knew we had a big chance to make a big upset and uh, create something really special. And we see our players, I mean, we, we just knew, like, we could go out there and make a good game plan. If we have a chance to do something great, we did it. And Amath, we just saw you there. You can see Rudy. I mean, Amath, what was your mindset going into the change room? How do you mentally prepare yourself for such a big game of this magnitude? Uh, I think Nico said it best. I think we were, like, very confident. Uh, I think for, for me personally and for like a lot of the other guys uh, playing the States with all the NBA players, it can seem like a, 
a, a tough task, but we had so many good players on the team, so many players that excel at their level and excel in the NBA during their careers that uh, just to be around them and seeing how confident they were and how like focused they were, I think it, it brought like took all of like all of us up, really brought us up and uh, made us ready. And uh, I think the focus the focus level in general was super high, not just because we had to play the United States, but because there were like somebody that were on the road of like us achieving our goal and uh, keep moving forward with the competition. So obviously we had to, we, we had to beat whoever was there, whether it was the States, whether it was Australia, we, we just had to go and beat these guys to be able to move forward. So I think that's where most of the focus were coming from, not just the opponent, but really like them being like on the way to us reaching our goal. Now, Rudy, a message from someone who knows you very well. I mean, you coached them basketball before and they have a question that they would like to ask you. And it's about preparation for this game. And we will just see that message very shortly. Coach Rudy, how do you prepare mentally to a game like this? And for, for, for me personally and for us, I think it was, we were on a mission. And you could feel it from you know, the day before, even on the plane. Uh, you know, our mind was, the, the atmosphere was different. Uh, you could tell that it was a game that so we, we did not want to lose, and we, we all were aware of that opportunity that we had in front of us. And I think, you know, we were able to all make each other better in that way, in a way that we just, just by the motivation, we pushed each other to, you know, to a highest level of competition. Okay, gentlemen, so we're going to go to now to the corridor just before you enter the court, and I guess... What a lot of basketball fans are thinking, you know, they see you guys playing this game, but you know, how do you compare how the United States are preparing for this game? Of course, a lot, you know, you know a lot of these players, but what is it like to see these players before you go up against them? I think. How do you feel when you see these players, Nico? You know what? No, no, I play with I play with Kemba, so you know, I play, we play against all of those guys, so we know them. We knew like we are not like really. I'm not impressed, but we respect them, but. No, this is the basketball world with a change from 20 years ago. So we, we knew that the change, so we can't really show them, like, we're scared of you. So, okay, you're good. You have a ton of NBA players who have stars, future superstars, and current superstars. But um, we knew we had a chance, so we see them. We don't really pay attention to that because they, they won't pay attention to us. They did not. So just go out there and win the game and try to, try to play a good basketball. <laughs> And Amath, when you see these players and you go up against them, I mean, what is going through your mind knowing you're up against players such as Kemba Walker, Donovan Mitchell, and players like that? What, what motivation does that give you? It's always motivation, not just because of like who we're going against, but more of, more or less because of like the mission that we're on. Like Rudy said, that's that, that was the biggest thing for me. I think, like they say, they play against these guys all the time. Uh, I've played, I, I work out in the states. I've played against the NBA players before. I'm not. I mean, unless it's Michael Jordan and LeBron James, I'm not really impressed by anybody. You know what I mean? So it's just, uh, it was not of like us thinking that, oh my God, we're playing against the States. It was more of us just being on a mission to try to get to our goals and accomplish what we wanted to accomplish in this competition. Rudy, you know, a lot of people know you for being such an excellent basketball player all over the world. And how important is it for you to sort of act as a leader to the French national team coming out into this warm up right now? I mean, how do you collectively bring the players together and keep them motivated? Well, for myself, I knew that it wasn't going to be about what I was going to tell my teammates. It was more about the attitude and, you know, and the way I was going to play and show up. And I tried to, you know, start the game very aggressively on both ends, you know, and, you know, I felt like, uh, you know, my goal was really to give the team a little boost of energy and, make sure that everyone understands that we have a chance of winning this game. And the start was really, really the key for us. Well, gentlemen, we're going to go now to the French national anthem. And I guess what a lot of fans would like to know is, well, playing at such a high level, I mean, all three of you are very prominent international basketball players. How much pride do you have listening to the French national anthem? It is, it I'll direct that question. Sorry. No, yep. no I, I, I think it was special not to... that song and with that jersey so it's always an honor to do it 
And there you can see a lot of fans now coming, making the journey from France, of course. And again, how much does that inspire you to see those traveling friends to make the journey out there, Nico? I mean, that was a long flight. <laughs> That's a long flight. That's a long, <laughs> long travel to get to China. And, and especially the way we play, because I think we play in four or five different cities. So in the, every single game, they show up to the, in the stand in the crowd. So that showed the commitment. Now, Rudy, obviously playing in the United States, every game that you play in, you obviously hear the American National Anthem. We're about to listen to it right now, but how different is it hearing the American National Anthem in this game than it is hearing it every single game that you play in the United States? I mean, it's always different when you play for, for your national team and when you, when you play in the league and they play the anthem every night. You know, it's like when you go out there and they play the anthem, your anthem, you, you're here to defend your colors. You know, so it's, it's always, uh, for me personally, it's a, I'm motivated every night, but it's a different kind of motivation for sure. Now, Amaf, when you're shaking hands with these American players, obviously you're paying a lot of homage, a lot of respect to these players, but what really is going through your mind? How much do you just want to get out there and prove to them that, you know, I'm here to beat you, of course? Yeah, I don't care about all that stuff. I'm not a social guy when it comes to uh, playing a game. I'm uh, like I'm refocused on us and on myself. And uh, yeah, like the focus starts like like Nico said, the focus started from like when we we're on that plane, uh, going to the next city to play uh, to play the United States. So at this point, I think all of us are focused. We're not really looking forward to like chit chatting or talking to people. We're just out here on a mission, and that's that's what we're doing. Definitely, of course. And I guess you know a lot of teams. One question that's actually come in that I'm going to ask to all of you is, a fan has asked, if you could play for another national team, which national team would it be? I'll start with the map. I mean, that's a very tricky question, of course. I mean, you're very that's proud a tricky to play one. for France. That's a tricky one. Uh, obviously, for like the French national team is like one of my proudest accomplishments in my career, so I wouldn't change that for anything. Uh, I think the other team I would like to represent, of course, is Senegal because that's where my heritage is from. That's where my parents are from, and that's a country that I've lived in, and I have a lot of pride in. Like, pride, like I get a lot of pride from, pride from. So, uh, yeah, I think Senegal would be the one and only other team that I would consider. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. And Rudy, what would be the case for you? I don't know. To be honest, I, I mean, I, my, my my dad is from Guadeloupe, but it's, it's French too, so it's like. For me, I don't see any. I don't see any other country, national country that I would like to play for. You know, I'm. I'm proud of where I'm from, and uh, and I wouldn't want it any other way. I mean, definitely. I mean that that is a very tricky question, I must say. But I mean, these were the questions that came in from a fan. I guess Nico, I, I imagine you would feel the same. But if there really was another nation that you probably Cameroon. would play for, which one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as the same as the math, I mean, my dad's from Cameroon, so my mom is French. I was born and raised in France, but uh, my dad's from Cameroon. I got my whole family back in Cameroon as well, so it's going to be Cameroon for sure. Well, gentlemen, I mean, if anything, you've definitely represented the French national team with definitely a lot of class, and you've definitely wore the colors very, very proud. But right now, let's run it back to the start of this game, and let's go to Vincent Collet, because a very prominent coach in Europe. And what is the message that Vincent Collet is giving you here at Math & Bayer? Uh, just to just go out there and uh, apply the game plan with no like no fear and just uh, stay focused on what we're trying to do and trying to accomplish and that we have all the tools and uh, all the players that we need to to go out there and win this game. Now, Rudy, what kind of motivation does Vasicole give you? Is he the kind of one that really wants you to go out there and work hard, or is he very much you know play your game, be very complacent? How is he a man motivated, Vasicole? Did you, did you ask me? Sorry. Sorry, yeah, Rudy, yeah. yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Now, he, you know, he really, he really motivates, motivates us before every game. He's very practical and very detail-oriented, so he pays attention to the details. But uh, I really felt like that game, you know, he, he found a way to, to motivate us. And he kind of, like gave us the direction, but it also let us play the game and go with the, with the flow of the game. And, you know, I think it was great. You know, he, was, he did a great job. Adiko, how much does Vincent Cole really sort of try to empower you with a much of leadership? I mean, you're a very experienced player with this team, but does he say to you at all, you know, you need to go out there and lead by example through your experience? 
You know, no, Vincent and I, we are a lot of history together. I mean, he's been my coach since 2004, so 16 years now. So he was my coach before I got drafted. And then as soon as we, we get the national team at the same time in 09. So I know him pretty well. He's been the same. I mean, he really improved a lot the way he managed guys. I mean, the team, a club, and national team very different. And then we got better. You know, we had some up and down, and we had some up and downs, but he is the best we ever had, I think. And uh, and the way he approached that competition, you know, that was a new era. A lot of young guys, you no know, tipping, but it's not there anymore. So a lot of new guys, young guys, and the way he approached it and the way he handled the new generation was pretty good this summer. Well, gentlemen, we're about to go to the court as the beginning of the tip off. And Math, the first question I'm going to ask you is who did you have your mind on and who you were going to defend first? Oh, man. Uh, shoot, I don't even remember. I think it was Brown. I'm pretty sure. But uh, I should have done my homework on this one. I don't, I'm not quite sure I remember. Now, right there, we can see Evan Fournier. And we know how great a player he is. He's having a magnificent career in the last few seasons in Orlando. But the question I want to ask you, Rudy, is how important is Evan Fournier to your offensive structure? Oh, he was, he was a key player. Of course, he was, I think, our best scorer, you know, and, uh, you know, just um, his mindset, his determination, you know, is really something that, you know, it, it leads it lead by example and, you know, he's definitely one of our big leaders. And Nico, what is Evan Fournier like in practice? I mean, is he a very tough player to go up against? But, I mean, how do, how do you sort of measure his work ethic going into these games? I mean, he, 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 he really is a hard worker, you know, he, he wants to be the best. He's been like that since his young, young age, so we don't really surprise about it. So, like, we knew to start that competition, he's going to have to be the guy on offense as a scorer. You know, he and Nando, we're gonna, we, we knew that, and he did it well. He did it pretty well. He knew he has to do a job, so... And everybody around, I mean, in the, in the lineup, we all had a job to do, a different job to do. You know, Frank has to do something. We knew Rudy's going to control the paint, offense and defense. Amati and I, we had to do, like, matchup and switch matchup on, on defense as well. He knew we could do that. But Evan was really the scorer. I mean, if something went wrong, just give the ball to Evan. And he's going to try to score points. He did it the whole tournament here in Nando. And, of course, Nico, you've got a teammate on the court right now, or an ex-teammate, in Kemba Walker. Did you have a few words for Kemba just before the tip-off? Yeah, you just say hi, like, you know, during the warm-up, quickly. You don't really, like, socialize, like I might say, before a game like that. Even if you know the guy, if when you play some guy for a while, you don't socialize because it's too much of a big stage to be friends at that time. We're going to talk about it after the game and be friends after. But during that time, you can't really. We just say hi, have a good game, and that's it. Definitely. Well, gentlemen, we're going to go to the tip-off right now. And, Rudy, the question I've got to you is, what happened to your shoe at the tip-off? I don't, I don't remember. Do you have the video? <laughs> right here. Here we go. Uh, I think someone – I think he landed on my shoe and I had to put it back in. <laughs> Yeah, if you look at the replay that. here, it's almost like it comes yeah. off. Yeah, it came off. The back of my shoe came off. And that never happened. You know, so it's, it was a little weird, but I, I put it back in pretty quick. I think that needs really... to be a new stat out there. You did very well to get that, uh, the shoe back on very quickly. I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> well, Britt, well, if we go to the early first play here, I mean, we talked about Evan Forney. I mean, right away... You can see he plays with a lot of confidence, but just how important was it for you guys and your confidence, um, Amath, for Evan to get the scoring going for France in this play right here? Uh, I think like Nicole said, like obviously, and, and Rudy said the same thing, Evan was, uh, he, had a, he had a big task for us, and I think it was to uh, score as many points as possible and as efficiently as possible. And I think he did just that. And uh, obviously, he's a very hard worker, he's a very good player, and uh, he, he's shown it before, and he just uh, proved it a little more during this competition. Definitely, definitely. You can see he's got an absolutely beautiful shooting form and he's got a very quick release and it's just very impressive to see that how well he gets it off. But Rudy, how often do you see a math take shots every practice? I mean, does he stay after practice? Does he put a lot of work into his game? Yeah, he does. He does. You know, and uh, I mean, from what I've seen 
I, I never played with Ahmed before, and I was really, you know, impressed by his work ethic and the work he put in every day. And I think, you know, there is no secret. The, the reason why he was able to contribute and, you know, help us achieve what we achieved is because, because of his work ethic. Now, if we look here, the United States respond very quickly with Donovan Mitchell. And of course, Rudy, you know Donovan Mitchell very well. You played together. I mean, what did you know about his game? And how did you, how were you able to get the French defense to sort of settle? Because you can see here he has back-to-back -back buckets. I, mean, I knew, I knew he was going to, he was going to try to be very aggressive. You know, I knew he was going to take a lot of shots. Uh, but he was going to, you know, first try to shoot the jump shot and then attack in the end of the game. So. Just try to make it hard on him early. He made some tough ones, but uh, I felt like we, we did a pretty good job containing him and making him, you know, earn everything he got. And that was the goal, you know, that was the game plan. Definitely, definitely. And, and Math, how did you feel your defensive intensity? I mean, how did you feel as the game went on, how you stepped it up and sort of helped your team? Because defensively, you were an amazing player in that game, but what did you do intrinsically in your mind to motivate yourself to say, you know, I'm not going to let you score? Uh, I think it was not just this game. I think it was like work from when we began together and like the roles were clearly defined. Uh, and I think that's one thing that was great about our national team is that we had good enough leadership from the players and the coaches to so that everybody on the team understood their roles very early. And uh, I figured like I figured out pretty quick that defensively I was going to have to step up and uh, be like uh, as good as possible to like be able to contribute in this team. And I thought that was what translated during this game, but also like, like most of the other games. And Nico, I mean, you saw that's a great defensive play by Rudy. Rudy, you internationally, you're known as being one of the defensive players in the world, but Nico, collectively as a unit, how important is it for you guys to be on the same page defensively to ensure that you stop these players to obviously to go on and win this game? Oh, no, that was the main goal of that team, you know, to, to be dominant on defense. Well, you, know, you know, we are, we are really, Rudy with us, you know, in the paint, and that's why all the guys all around, we have to take some pressure off Evan and Nando. So that's why Frank, Amat, and I, we really try to do what you have to do to on the perimeter to to jump on defense, knowing got Rudy behind us, so Evan will have to do so much and be safe on offense. And especially on that that game, you no, know, we, we we knew like one guy gonna take off for sure. You can't really contain twelve guys like that and make sure. They score less than 10 points. That won't happen, especially against the USA team. So, no, Donovan had a good game, but we knew it. So, we controlled that. The game was like, we need to control Kemba. And we did that. Now, Frank and, and, and Andrew did a fantastic job on him. Now, Matt, whenever you see a United States team, the first thing people think is the amount of depth they have in their bench. But tell me more about the French national team and the depth that you have from your bench and the, the amount of players that come off and sort of contribute to your team. Uh, yeah, I think us as a country, we're a little underrated uh, because I think like we do a really good job at developing players and uh, then keeping them playing for the, for the French national team. But uh, again, I think the biggest job and the biggest thing for us was leadership. I think we had a, a great leadership, whether it was from the staff and the, and the players from like very early on. So everybody understood their role and uh, like this kind of the standard with which he had to play because we knew we had to bring it any time. You know, we're like from very early, if you wanted to make the team, you had to make sure that you brought it every game. And I think uh, eventually when we had our final group, we were very deep and uh, very committed. And uh, I think that's what got us to where we, we got, even though that's not where we wanted to get, but we still had a, a very good run. And then, of course, you know, we talk about the depth on the bench. You just had Albacy come right off the bench and get that prominent still. Rudy, what's it like knowing you've got a teammate like Albacy coming off the bench and be able to contribute for you guys like that? That was a statement, you know, coming in and uh, coming in on one, guarding one of the best players in your position in the world and just take the ball away from him like that. And for, you know, I remember being on the court defensively and, you know, he gave, he gave us all, uh, you know, a little boost of energy for sure. And Matt, we're going to go now to your first points of the game. And to me, I absolutely love this play. You caught it at mid-range. For me, this was very Michael Jordan-esque. And I think, Nico, you get the assist here. But Matt, run us by. How often do you practice this move? Uh, first off, I'm going to say one thing. Don't ever mention me and Michael Jordan in the same sentence. Uh, and then I'm going to say that's definitely one of the... Because nobody can be mentioned with Michael Jordan in the same sentence. It's just not something that we do. 
Uh, but yeah, that's if you ask anybody, that's like my pattern and move. Like that's literally what I do every day, every game, every practice. Uh, it's on everybody's scouting report. I'm still kind of surprised that I get anybody with this move. I do it so much. So uh, yeah. Now, Nico, did you get the assist for that play? I don't think so. He took a dribble or so. FIBA was different. <laughs> well, you know, you're going to next time that. You can't take a dribble. Move and still getting assist. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, Exa, I totally understand what you're saying. I mean, it was just such an unbelievable <clears> move. I mean, if we go in next now, I think, really, one thing in this game where you were very prominent at is that you never really gave up. Anytime you got the ball in the low key, there were double teams, there were triple teams, but... Here comes the pick and roll, of course, but what I love is just the never, the never say die attitude right here. What yeah, is your, what, what's, what's going through your mind, Rudy, every time you're going up for a shot? Is it to go up for a second, a second opportunity as well? I mean, I'm trying to make the first one, but when I miss, I'm going to, <laughs> to get my offensive rebound. And, you know, that's, that's the way I've, that's what I've done my whole career. And I think it's pretty hard to stop. If, if they're able to stop me on the first shot, it's very hard to get me on the second jump. Of course, I mean, the American defense was very physical. Every time you got the ball, you could see the help side, the double teams coming. But again, it just shows the tenacity and sort of the hunger, I guess, to go back after that. You could see Vincent Cole, you know, very excited, applauding you for that effort. But I guess every little effort counts in this game, and you guys really made it count. Now, at this point, how are you guys feeling in the game just at the end of the first quarter? I mean... Were you guys where you wanted to be, or did you feel that you guys could possibly be ahead a little bit more? Uh, Nico, what did you think about that? You know what? I, I talk about it with the, at the end of the first because that was a tie game. And uh, that was the second time I have to play the U.S. So the first time I played it was against, was in London in 2012. So that was a different team. And that was a tie game also <laughs> in the first quarter. They were still lost by 30. So... I thought that's what I told to the assistant coach, Rudy Nolan, like, just cool down, I mean. Last time we did that, we, lost, still, we still lost by 30. So just take focus, take quiet. But we, the, the mindset was different. Was different, and um, and guy came off the bench, did great. So we knew the starters. We did start the game in pretty good way, and the guy we came in. Well, after that, did a good job as well. So we we're pretty confident at that time. Now, a lot of times, what you see on social media is professional basketball teams practicing half court shots after practice, and I think it's pretty much at the end of the shot clock. Nando Ducolo has the ball with seconds left and he launches up a prayer. I mean, do you guys in your practices, do you have fun at the end and play a game at half court who can make those shots? I mean, Matt, do you end up being the winner in those competitions? First off, I don't gamble and I definitely don't play those games because I will lose all my money. But, uh, I, yeah, but I still don't gamble. That's why I can live in Vegas. <laughs> but uh, if I had to put my money on uh, anybody to make those type of shots, it would probably be Evan and Nando. I definitely wouldn't put in on a, on Rudy because I saw him lose a lot of money doing I that. Made, but I uh, made, yeah, I made some money. Dude. I made some money. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, well, not not, money, not this summer. <laughs> not that no, summer. Not this summer. <laughs> not this summer. <laughs> <laughs> I made some. But yeah, I if it was some. anybody, I would say, I would say Nando or or, or uh, Evan would be able to make these shots. But Andrew now, too. Rudy. Andrew, I'll be. Rudy, do you think you yeah, can make yeah. these shots as well? Ask, ask, ask Vasson Poirier, ask all these guys. I took all the money. I lost against Evan a few times, though. But a few times? Evan, and Evan, I should never play against Evan. A lot of times. A few times. A few times. Once a day, once a day, once a day. Or twice. For 10 go. days. <laughs> For 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, we're going to go next part of the game, and you guys go on a 9-0 run. And I guess, <laughs> Rudy, what's going through your mind when you sort of gain this momentum in the second quarter and you're on this run? Are you starting to feel that, you know, you're controlling the tempo of this game? You know, for me, for me to go, uh, I knew it wasn't going to be about one quarter, two quarters. It was really about keep putting pressure on them the whole game. And, you know, and I was so focused on every possession, defensively, offensively, that it didn't matter when, like, until the last second, I was going to give, you know, my highest level of focus and, and energy. And I didn't want to have any regrets after that game. And Matt, how are you feeling during this 9-0 run? I mean, were you starting to feel that, you know, that this could be the game for you guys? Or were you thinking, no, we have to stay focused because as Team USA, anything could happen? 
Oh, we definitely got to stay focused. I think a, a game is a long, like, it's, it's, I mean, this is the second quarter. It's a long, a lot of time left. I've lost games in the last five minutes when I was up 10. Like, anything can happen in basketball, and it can happen very quickly. So I think the focus, the focus level is definitely something that we had to, we had to keep all throughout. And Nico, now we're going to come to the end of the second quarter. You guys have a substantial lead against a, t a Team USA. But what's going through your mind and what do you feel the message you need to convey to your teammates coming towards the end of this uh, second quarter? You, you know, like, again, those guys, like, anything can happen. You can be uh, up 10 and two minutes later, it'll be a tie game. Exactly what happened in the third quarter. But, but you know, with those guys, they're so confident on, on their game so they can catch fire at any time and and get 30 points in one half. So you have to stay focused, like control the rebound. Because that was the main focus by, by coaches. We have to win the rebound, especially on that team and control the paint. And and don't let them get points in the paint. And we did a good job on that. We have we did a good job in the first half. We had some two, for like four or five minutes. We didn't do it in the second half, but throughout the game, that was way to go to control the rebound. That's why Rudy did it. And all the big men did it, and uh, and don't let them score in the paint. They put them in the three-point line and let them shoot threes. Now, Rudy, just before we go to the next shots, Vincent Colet there, you can see he's talking with you. What was the communication from your coach there just at the end of the first half? I think he was just, uh, if, if I'm right, because I, I think maybe I came out at the end of the second quarter because I had two fouls, and he was just telling me that, you know, I did a great job, and me out to keep me safe and the second half was going to be the key and you know i think it was a great talk from him definitely definitely we'll just go some shots here from the first half there you can see turner of course but uh, matt going into that changing room at the halftime and reflecting on that first half how were you feeling going into the second half uh i think we've been confident since the beginning but uh Obviously, being able to uh, play the first half that we played, we kind of grew in confidence. We also knew we had to be careful and stay focused. So, yeah, I think everybody was uh, anxious to get back on the court and get back to work because we know we had a chance to do something special. And Rudy, of course, there you can see some very aggressive moves going to the basket. I mean, the USA were very physical with you, but it is until the second half where you sort of get that first dunk, and I guess we'll be up to see that very soon. But, again, going into the second half, what do you think the game plan was, Nico? You know, no, we, we knew like uh, Turner had foul trouble and uh, Lopez as well. And I know at some point, like uh, they, they, they really do that every game, they're going to play small ball. So the, the goal was uh, like to get the ball inside to Rudy and uh, don't adjust to them. I have to make them adjust to us. I think that was the first play in the second half for I, I throw the ball inside, got that play for four years now. And I throw the ball inside and he dunk it right away. Don't take a dribble like Hamat and do a fadeaway. He just dunk it. So yeah, that, that was a, oh, I oh, like MJ, like Matt. <laughs> I'd like Matt, to see Rudy do that one go, away. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I, I said my piece. I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, you're good. Oh, gentlemen, <laughs> we just got a question in from a fan, and this is on Twitter from at Jess Lever, and I'm going to ask this one to you, um, Matt. When is the best time during the day to train, to practice, where you've got a lot of energy and preparation for a game like this? Wait, for the game or just uh, like a usual workout? I'm guessing this is a usual workout. I mean, they want to know what, when is the best time for you to train during the day? Oh, gotcha. I, I personally like to train in the morning. Uh, I love waking up early. I like to uh, I like to just get my workout in and feel like I've accomplished so much before eight or before nine a.m. Because then you have the rest of the day to to get to other businesses or the other stuff that you need to do. But yeah, I like to get mine in like for when I first wake up and actually try to wake up a little earlier than usual to get my workout in. Okay, excellent, excellent. We're gonna go into the second half now, and this is where I guess the tide just turns as the USA make a little bit of a comeback. But Rudy, what was the final message here from Vance and Cole going into the second half? I mean, I, 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 I don't remember because I was so focused on the game, but I, I think this message was probably to stay patient, you know, stay focused on defense and that it was going to be a long game. You know, it's not, you're not going to win the game in the next six minutes. You're not going to lose it in the next six minutes, but every second is going to count and you got to stay focused and together. 
and that's probably what Evan was telling us too. Different way. Of course, Nico, you see that. You see coming into the second half, I mean, how well do you have to keep everyone on the same page? I mean, that leadership that you bring to this team. No, no, we, we have to stay focused. And since the history of sometimes French basketball, we're so close to do something great and we messed it up. So we, we knew we were on the verge to do something pretty good, but we still have to do 20 minutes. Now in this, in this game to play 20 minutes. So we did a good first half, but like I said, we never know what can happen with that team especially the USC team because they can take over and do crazy stuff so so just stay focused have a good start the first a good a great start going to be huge a key on, on that game because if we just relax okay we have eight and we're going to be fine no we did a good job to start single single life actually well Rudy we've mentioned quite a lot now I mean the defense from the United States was very physical in the first half they made it very tough for you but we're about to see your first dunk and the question <laughs> I've got for you and many fans Rudy how did it feel when you got this big dunk? And Nico, you do get the assist here. I, for me, I really wanted to destroy them. You know, and uh, when, when Carl called a play for me starting the, the second half, I knew that I had to make a statement. And no matter what, I, I just wanted to go up strong. And I could have a foul, offensive foul or, you know, <laughs> No matter what, but I just didn't want to, I wanted to make a statement. And I knew that, you know, it was going to, once again, every single time that I had the ball, I knew that it was going to impact the team. And not just, not just by the, the, the two points, but mentally, you know, show them, show my teammates that we're going to do, dominate them every single time. Really, you know, going on to the next play, it's quite interesting because you talked about you possibly could have got an offensive foul, but go right back down the other end. Ah, Here you can see Miles Turner. How well did you read him for this play? <laughs> I said something to him after I dunked the ball. I can't remember what, but I said something to him and I felt that the way he was running, I felt that he was frustrated. And, you know, I just put my hands up and he just pushed me, so... You know, uh, I just fell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt, you have a big smile on your face. Has that happened in practice before? No, nah, but that was that was a def that was definitely a flop. It was well played, but it was definitely a flop. You pushed me with two hands. I mean, what? what yeah, okay. You Everyone. get pushed with two hands all game long, but you don't always fall. I lost my balance. <laughs> my shoe. Was <laughs> Nico, what's your opinion? Is it, w w did he sell it very well? He did. He did sell it pretty well. I mean, it, it works. So that was, I think that was his third foul at, at that point of time. So and we knew if he didn't have Turner on, on the court because a great rim, rim defender. We know that. Maybe one of the best in the NBA, if not the best. So that's what he said before the game. That's why we did get so motivated before the game as well. But... Um, but no, no, we knew if it was off the court, that'd be a huge key for us because he, he really good at like, protect the rim. So that was a third foul like, to start the single on the half. That's huge. So good job, Rudy. Basketball IQ from Rudy. I see you. Yeah. <laughs> so, Nico, we're going to go now to probably one of my favorite parts of the game. The next play is the four-point play here. You can see, I mean, what was going through your mind as soon as you caught the ball and you get the shot up? I don't know, so I try try to get really an assist, maybe. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> huh. I don't know. I just feel I wasn't the reason to take a shot, and uh, we just had two two good plays by Rudy. He had three good plays. He had a bucket. He got a offensive foul, and I got an assist. So Rudy did great for us to start a single half. Uh, Rudy, of course, you know. Everyone knows that your game back to the basket is very prominent, but I mean, you can see right there with so many options on the perimeter, do you sometimes in your mind think, you know, who am I going to get the ball to? Because I've got so many perimeter shooters to go to, of course. That's, that was definitely one of our strengths. You know, we had uh, me inside and, and, and then we had guys that could shoot the ball. And Nick, I didn't think he was going to take that shot because, you know, usually Nick try to make the right play and try to pass most of the time, but when, that, when it came off, uh, uh, I kind of knew that it was going to go in, you know, because when Nico is aggressive like that, I can see the look in his eyes, and he's a different kind of player. 
Okay, of course, I think we're going to go to a timeout next. But at, at this point, you think the United States start to turn the tide just a little bit. But um, how do you feel at this point in the third quarter <clears throat> where you guys are going? But, Nico, one thing I've just noticed is this turnover here. What happened in this play? I don't know. No, I, I knew they're going to try to do stay focused on Rudy because we scored so many times on that play. So I tried to attack the baseline. I just turned the ball over. That's it. Uh, Matt, do you want to? What, what, what's your opinion of that? That turnover? Yes. <laughs> I'm not saying anything to anybody on here about turnovers. I'm just going to leave these guys alone. They got way more uh, experience in the national team, and I don't want to come back and get bullied all summer. So uh, I'm just going to let that be. <laughs> Rudy, do, do, you think, do you think that Nico didn't sell it as well as you did in the, in the offensive foul play? Try to. Definitely try to. But, you know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> uh. All right, gentlemen, we're going to go now to the U.S. momentum. And right now, the U.S. start to change the, the, the plan of the game. And so if you can see, they make the, the momentum going forward. What was your mind going at, Matt, at this time when you saw them making this surge in the game? Uh, I mean, I think we all knew they were going to make a run at some point. Like, uh, like Nico said, they're confident in their games. They can uh, get on fire really fast. So a run was to be expected. And basketball is a game of run. So all it is is we had a good lead. We were able to, like, build that little cushion. We just had to get back on track and, uh, and kind of keep executing what we've been executing before that. Nico, you know, in a time like this, of course, where you built the lead in the second quarter and the United States starts to come back, how important is it for someone like yourself, who's such an experienced player for this national team, to really keep the players together and stay focused? No, no, we have to, yeah, don't panic. No, relax. No, they're going to make a run and they didn't make a run. So it was still a long game. We still have like more than a quarter to play. So, and we had experience on our side as well because we had Nando. You no, know, we played some competition with uh, Rudy and, and Evan as well. So, we had guys who's been there before, like in that moment. No, feedback game is different. And those games are different than the NBA. So, we had guys who've been there before. So, we knew we had experience maybe on our side. As I'm crazy to say, but because it's so good, we really had experience on our side so we would really, we didn't panic at that time they made that run they good okay cool just relax so just get back on defense get the ball inside to rudy get the ball to nando and and evan and just execute the game plan now rudy one of the things that really worked for the, the national team in this game for your team obviously was the pick and roll and you know the crowd is starting to get behind the u.s national team they're making this run but how do you go about in your mind to set that pick and roll and to sort of slow the game down and really make it your tempo I think, you know, the Team USA did a great job of giving us different looks defensively. They really, at one point, they were switching everything. At some point, they were really helping inside. And for me, uh, as the guy that sets the screen, I was really trying to anticipate what they were trying to do. To be able to first get my teammate open, get Nando, Evan, Nico, all these guys open for the shot, for the drive, and then get myself open. Because I knew that there was no way they could stop both of us. They, they, they weren't going to be able to stop the, the, our guards and myself inside. And we did a great job taking the right decisions at the right time. You know, guards did an excellent job. You know, Rudy, one thing about you is you're probably one of the best in the world when it comes to the pick and roll. But have you ever thought in your mind, and I guess I'll ask it like this, if Vance and Cole said to you, hey, Rudy, no pick and roll, pick and pop, I want you to shoot a three-pointer, how confident would you be to sort of go out of that comfort zone and take that pick and pop three point shot. Nick looks a little bit like no, no, no. But how would you feel, Rudy? Uh, if if coach would have told me that before that game, I would have asked for him to get drug tested. Because <laughs> again, against the team that you know, a game when we were up fifty, I won that. But against a crucial game that could completely change the history of French basketball. Uh, it would have been a little weird coming from Vince. Uh, uh, I think I would have checked myself, make sure I'm not dreaming. I don't think it would have been a great decision for a coach. 
Matt, what uh, would yeah. you say if you saw Rudy take a three in that situation? I mean, he was practicing all summer long. Step back threes, crossover threes, uh, spot up threes. So he's been practicing a lot. And uh, even with all that practice, I still want to give him the rock out there. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be like, I'm at. But anyway. not I mean, do what you do. Yeah. Do what you do. Let me do what I do. <laughs> well, gentlemen, we're going to go into the fourth quarter now. And I guess... You know, one quarter left, and this is really make or break for you guys. And, you know, the U.S. have made this run. But, Nico, what really is that sort of feeling you have at this point at the beginning of the fourth quarter? You know, we, of course, like with the other run, they're still a close game. So, and they, I mean, they've been pretty hot at that time. So, what we did is just control our defense, just relax and work on the rebound and give the ball inside. And, like I say, we didn't panic at all. I mean, we down seven. We like on the 19 and two run for them, something like that. So, so we we knew like just we have to relax, guys. Because we we played at the tempo at that time. We played the way they wanted us to play, and that's what coach said at that time. Just like to get back to who we are. And we did. Now, I'm at. We talked about the depth in your bench and the amount of players you've got coming off. I mean, you've got a fantastic team, but. Right now in the fourth quarter, one player who really stood out for you guys, I felt, was, was Frankie. Frankie came in, he hit some big shots. I mean, what's it like having a teammate like Frankie that can really step up in the crunch time and make those big-time shots? I mean, obviously, Frank is incredible talent, you know, and I think he, he had a big chip on his shoulder coming in his game and playing against some of the guys that he plays against all the time in the, in the NBA. Uh, obviously, I think Nick and uh, Rudy are, like, more established players in the league. Than he is, so he had a, a lot of proof, and uh, I think he did absolutely that. And he, he played amazing for us throughout the whole competition. He had the right mentality, the right uh, work ethic the whole time, and uh, I think it's definitely it was definitely his time to shine, and he, he took the opportunity to the fullest. And Rudy, you know how proud are you to have? You know, everyone knows what a fantastic basketball player you are. Of course, Nico as well, and you too, and Matt. But how proud of you? Proud were you, of course? of Frankie to step up and hit those big time shots, not only for the French national team, but for himself as a player. I was, I was really happy for him, you know, because I know that uh, for his fir first few years in the league, he, he didn't prove yet what he wants to prove. And that game was a, and that's what I told him, you know, that game was a, a big opportunity for him to, to, to show what he can be and who he is, you know, and to show that he can play with those guys, you know, and, you know, what he did in the fourth quarter, uh, I don't think we would have won the game without him. So just because he made some big shots when we needed them, and we all know what he brings defensively, but even offensively, he made some, some great decisions on the stretch. Now, Nico, we're going to go a little bit further into the fourth quarter, and, you know, you guys have really sort of weathered the storm. The U.S. made that run, but you guys have got yourself back into the game, and you have a four-point lead at this moment with three minutes to go, but... Really, Nico, what is going through your mind here with three minutes to go when you're up by four at this point when this bucket goes in by Rudy? Oh, when Rudy dunk it, I'm like, okay, guys, now relax. Okay, we, we, we control the game now. They're, they're the guys. We have to panic. We control the game. We, we didn't adjust to them. Rudy's still on the court because, no, we watch, like, we watch videos and every time they put a small lineup, they play like the other team plays small, so... We kept Rudy on the court. We didn't adjust to them. We didn't panic. And and right now, we, we I think we had like uh, a 10-2 run, something like that at that time. So, and uh, no, a 15-2 run. 15-2 run. And um, after, like, when uh, when Frank made the back to his next next play. So, um, so we, 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 we knew like, okay, the momentum is on our side with two minutes left. And the crowd was getting to be on our side as well because they knew, I mean, they were, the U.S. were not on a 46 winning streak combined. And the crowd was witnessing maybe something crazy. The streak might be stopped, be over tonight. So when you had the crowd on our side against the U.S., some of them were against the U.S. and cheering for us. You have some momentum on our side, so now we have to close it out and stay focused on defense, especially. Now, before we go to the next play, Rudy, I just got one more question. We've already asked you about the first dunk, but that second dunk right there, Rudy, what was the feeling inside you when you made that second dunk? I mean, just the adrenaline, 
you know the the feeling uh, just watching it, watching the action you know i got some chills just because like we the i felt that the momentum was shifting at that point and I, in my head there was no way we we're gonna lose that game after that like there was no way and we we're gonna do whatever it takes so and every second we we're gonna you know be focused especially defensively you know so for me at that point it was like a new game was just starting and you know it was like we got four minutes left uh we're not gonna give him anything any chance so we're gonna go to the next play we're gonna go back to frankie we talked about him hitting some big time shots but at this point it looks like he's hit a three-pointer but uh, matt were you slightly disappointed to know that this was a two and not a three-point shot I mean, I don't really remember, honestly. All I know is that it was a clutch bucket for us. Uh, we needed it, and uh, two points is better than zero. Three points would have been better, but two points is definitely better than zero. So he, I, I think we were all super hyped to get a, 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 such a basket, such a clutch basket at the end of the, the shot clock like he did. And again, Nico, I mean, we talked about, you know, this was a big game for Frankie. Of course, he stepped up big time playing against a lot of these players before. But, you know, how impressed with you for him to get a step back shot off against a player like Kemba Walker, a player that you know so well, who's a very good defender. I mean, how tough a shot was that by Frankie? No, that was a, a big statement game for, for him. And that was a big statement play as well. I mean, to hit two shots in the clutch, especially that one against Kemba. Kemba is one of the best point guys in the league right now. And, uh, you know, I think Frank will introduce himself to the world. Like Rudy said, he had to prove something. That was the best stage for him to show, especially in the NBA, in the public, U.S., the American public, like who he really is. I mean, Kemba didn't have his best game against us because he missed some shots, maybe also because Frank and Andrew did a good job and on offense, especially in the fourth quarter, really Frank took shots like he had to take. He had, he, had to take, he had to take those shots and he did it and it was huge for us. And that's why I think we're really happy on the bench because to have those shots from him, that was something even special for the team. Now, gentlemen, we're going to go to a next play. And for me, this is arguably the best defensive play of the game. And Rudy, this is what you're renowned for. But I'm going to direct this question at Matt. How big a block was this by the great Rudy Gobert? Uh, I don't want to toot his horn too much because obviously he's right here. So I don't, want to, I don't want him to feel too great about himself. But obviously, I, th I think he's... he's what two-time NBA NBA best defensive player? So uh, just to, to be able to like switch on a guard like that and guard him just like as good or better than anybody else, I think is where where he gets his money from and where he gets his uh, the the way he, like he's respected everywhere in the world for. So uh, just for our guards and our staff to be comfortable with the fact that we can just switch everything, especially even with our like the, our biggest guy in the team, is a, a luxury that like a lot of other teams don't have. And so, yeah, he proved it. He is just against, like, another great NBA guard, and he's able to just guard him like any other NBA guard would be able to, if not better, and that's, that's great for us. Now, Rudy, obviously, that was Donovan Mitchell that you blocked, your teammate. Have you, I guess, did you know that he was going to go with a reverse layup, or do you think, had that been any other player, that possibly could have been a foul, maybe not being used to seeing that every day in practice? I was just focused on the moment. You know, I looked at, I remember looking at the clock and telling myself that if we get a stop on this possession, there's a high chance that we're going to win this game. And, you know, when he added a little something, of course, that he was my teammate uh, that had the ball, and that I know him pretty well, you know, but I wasn't, on my, in my mind, I wasn't going to let anyone score on that, on that possession. There was no way. Now, we're going to go next to the the free throws towards the end of this game. And, you know, Nico, did it surprise you a lot to see that the USA had missed quite a few free throws sort of here in the crunch time of the game? I mean, they missed quite a lot. I mean, here's a three, three-point shot by Kemba Walker. But, again, he stepped up and missed quite a lot. Did this surprise you, him being a, a former teammate of yours? Uh, kind of, yes. So, you know, we know it was a special time for them because it didn't – I think they went out, they didn't get, get in this position to be down five, down six, less than a minute to go. So that was, that crowd, that's what I say. I mean, FIBA is different than the league, and, and we knew we had experience on that side, on our, in our side. I mean, so, I mean, that happened. 
that happened. So he missed free throw. We made our free throws. We could close out the game that way. So, I mean, I take those missed shots miss shot for sure. I'm going to throw one out there. If the game is tied or you're down one and there's no seconds left, uh, Matt, who in your mind is probably the number one player to step up on your team to probably hit that crucial free throw? A free throw? I'll put my life in Nando's life. I mean, Nando's, Nando's hands. I'll put my, literally my life in his hands. Like, he shoots like 96 and 97%. It's like, you can't foul him. And it's the same thing. I mean, uh, I think I, I've played against him before, and uh, it's just, he's so good at it, just putting himself on the line just because he knows he's going to make all of them. So, yeah, Nando. Now, does Vance Cole give you any sort of like games and practice for free throws? I mean, does it, are there any sort of activities, Rudy, that you enjoy in those practice that helps you with the free throws? I um, mean, that's from personally, I shoot free throws after every practice. Uh, you know, uh, we try to do some, some time competitions. It's like we have to do a contract as a team. And if you don't, if you don't get that contract, like for example, we can make, I don't know, uh, we all shoot two. Everyone shoots two free throws. And if it's like 12 guys, we got to make like 20 out of 24. And if we don't make it, we got to run full court, come back. So, you know, it's, it's a good game, I think, for the mind and for the, to add a little pressure than just shooting with no pressure in practice. Of course, Nico, the question I've got for you is, what is it like, the difference in shooting free throws when you're playing for Charlotte than when you're playing in China at the FIBA World Cup? The sort of atmosphere, how different is that atmosphere? It's different because, no, when FIBA is usually like a game, like high-pressure game or NACA game most of the time. So, you know, we play 82 games in the NBA, so it's different, the pressure is different, but you play, I mean, I've been in a situation when I made free throws in 2014 to win the medal, and I missed those free throws in 2015 to get to the final. So the, the pressure is different, and the atmosphere is different for sure. Well, gentlemen, we're going to go now to the final few seconds of this game, and I guess in that little huddle there, I mean, what is the message that you're giving to the players there, Nico? Just relax, just close out the game because, you know, I mean, when you watch the history of French basketball, especially in 2005 against Greece, until the the last minute, like the last seconds, everything is over. We're not done yet. So just close out the game the right way. Now, Nico, you just stepped out of bounds there, but had you kept the ball in play, did you have a kind of finishing move, like a kind of dunk, a windmill, a, a 360? What, were, no, what uh, would you have executed? Uh, nothing crazy. Just to one hand or two hands down to maybe a left hand layup, like something <laughs> casual. Exactly. Something with What about you, Matt? What, 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 what would admit. you have done if you were in that situation? I oh, definitely shit. would have windmilled it. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well get a highlight. You know what I mean? It's the end of the game. Uh, obviously, it's, it's a very serious game and uh, there are high, high stakes, but finish a game with a highlight like that would have been great. Mm-hmm. Rudy, what about you? Layup. <laughs> That's a lie. That's a lie. I would, I would have probably tried something. Something that we never Step back before. three. <laughs> <laughs> if it's wins, whatever. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, probably, yeah. Probably some pretty emphatic, you know. I would have probably try to break the rim or something. Mm-hmm. I see that. Uh, Matt, has he ever broken the rim before? Not that I've seen, but his dunks are pretty damn scary. I tell you that much. I'm not jumping with him. Mm-hmm. Okay, so folks, go. we're going to go now to these celebrations. And, you know, the game is up. But at this point, you know, it's over. And, Nico, what's the feeling that you've just beaten the United States now? I mean, how, how do you go? What's going through your head at this point? I'm like, wow, I mean, we, we, we did it, actually. No, we, we did it. I believe we were just the quarterfinals. So, <laughs> no, just stick focus. And <laughs> because, uh, I mean, we did that mistake for five years before that when we beat Spain. So, just relax, focus. We did a good job, but we didn't nothing yet. I mean, there were just the quarterfinals. 
So don't stay focused and don't mess up the semifinals. Actually, we did it again. So, <laughs> <laughs> and we did it. We messed up the semifinals pretty well. So, but yeah, that was still just talk about that game. That was just great. I can't be like that. Now, Rudy, at this point, you know, you've beaten a lot of your, you know, you've beaten your teammate Donovan Mitchell, you've beaten players that you go up against, but. You know, as Nico just said, it's tough. It is the quarterfinals, but, you know, it's tough because you've beaten the United States and it's the one team everybody wants to beat. But does it really, I guess, is it tough to really admit that it does almost feel like you have almost won the final, even though it is Team USA? I mean, for, what I was trying to tell myself is that we have to enjoy the moment, you know, because it's something that it's not just a regular game and we knew that. So it might be, that was probably the best team in the tournament and we, we, we beat them. But at the same time, we, we wanted more. So, and, you know, we knew that it was just a step, you know, and we, I think our focus was already, you know, I think it was hard to, like, just wipe that game away and get ready for, for the next game. But at the same time, uh, I didn't feel like we were overly celebrating or I didn't have that feeling that we were overly accomplished. You know, what we told each other after what we, after in the locker room, we told each other that, you know, we we have to be we have to get ready for the next one, and you know, I think we did everything as leaders. You know, try to make sure that the guys uh, didn't feel accomplished, and you know, we wanted more. Now, Matt, obviously going on for this game, of course, you know, the next thing to look for is the Olympics, and what does it mean to you, Matt, to sort of play at that next level for the French national team in the Olympics? Uh, a lot of work. Obviously, my, my spot is never guaranteed. Uh, I was lucky enough to be a part of this next last adventure. Uh, but obviously, a lot of work. I think uh, one of the things that I'm the most proud of is that I was able to earn the trust of like all my teammates and the staff. Uh, I did it once. I, I do believe I can do it again. But I'm like, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing experience. I think uh, the, what I, I'm going to keep from uh, this last campaign was just the, 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 the feeling of being a part of this team, just the, the guys in general, the staff, the, the, the whole experience itself, more than the game itself, just to, to be able to just be with all my, uh, my, my French guys and really an amazing oh, wow. group, group of guys, an amazing group of guys throughout the whole, the, whole, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole competition. So that's what I'm looking for the most. Ah, that's a very good, it's a very good dance moves there, man. I tell you, but Nico, you know, what do you think you guys have to do going into the Olympics, you know, to get that gold medal? Because it's so deserving. You guys are a fantastic team. But what do you feel you have to do as a leader for this team? You know what? No, in the Olympics, is only 12 teams is so different. You know, I had a chance to to do it twice you know, in London and in Rio. So that's the only thing I missed with the national team. But uh, we are, the one thing I know, we, like one thing we say about, we talked about with Nando after the game, we just need a super team for the U.S., for sure. You're going to bring, like, the super, super team in Tokyo, so it's going to be different to beat them. So we have to do the same game, but be extra, 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 extra motivated. And more, more focused. Hmm? <laughs> we haven't been, but, uh, you know, to get a medal in the Olympics is the main goal, and we never know what can happen, because it's so, so special as a group. To, to compete against guys like that. So we, we see what happens. Rudy, do you honestly think, I mean, you guys have a fantastic team. I think you guys are more than capable. I think you can do it. But what do you think you guys have to do to beat the United States or any great team, I guess, at the Olympics? Uh, I think it's about us. And of course, you know, I, I think they, they're really going to try to bring, you know, some guys that weren't there. Uh, Last summer, you know some some guys that are more, that are more experienced in the FIBA game, but uh, I think it's about the way we're gonna prepare, you know, mentally, physically, uh, and you know, the window is always short, but you know, with the closeness that we have in our group, and you know, all those moments that we're able to, the good ones and the bad moments that we're able to go through last summer, uh, really gonna help us for the future and. You know, we like I said in that in that competition, there were some great moments. There were some awful moments, but I think overall it was a great experience for our group. And you know, I think it can only make us better for the future. 
Well, gentlemen, I uh, obviously want to thank you guys very much. Thank you for coming here. It's a pleasure to be in the presence of three great international basketball players, Nico, Rudy, and Amat. Obviously, this is Run, the, Run That Back, episode two. Um, I wish you guys all the best of luck. I mean, you guys have definitely inspired a younger generation of basketball players all over the world. Um, Amat, I think you've played very fantastic in this game. And I look forward to seeing you guys play in the future, of course. So thank you very much, fellas. Thank you. Appreciate thank you, you guys. Thanks for having us. Hi, guys. Peace.